Hey guys, I'm Michael J. Migliori and I've watched a ton of movies and this is the way I feel about them. Mucho, mucho, mucho amor. The Netflix documentary about beloved Latin American television personality Walter Mercado. Now, I could be wrong about this, but my life experience makes it impossible for me to set aside my strong bias towards this documentary. As an American Latino growing up in the 80s and 90s, the presence of Walter Mercado in our household was undeniable. If you hadn't experienced the charm that was the epicenter of the Mercado craze, then perhaps you may view this film a bit differently. Walter Mercado was a Spanish television astrologer that captivated audiences across the world, whether you believed in what he was saying or not. The film talks about Mercado's rise to popularity up until his strange and sudden disappearance from screens at the end of his career and beyond. Above all else though, the film celebrates the life and achievements of a man who never wanted anything more than just to spread love and positivity to as many people as he could. It's a wonderful dose of something special for us in these trying times. The Old Guard. The Netflix original and exclusive, much like this segment is shaping up to be, Charlize Theron leads a group of badass, sort of immortals on black ops for the good of society. That is until the worst bit of society, evil greedy corporations, discover their existence and enact a plot to do whatever they can to harness the key to their immortality. I really love Charlize Theron and I feel that she is so well suited for this sort of action film. Based on the comic book series released by Image Comics, this film actually focuses less on action and more on character interactions, which is actually a great plan because the characters in this film have such a wonderful and rich story in their years and years of unending life. When action does come into play, it is very deftly choreographed and poignant. Big hats off to Marwen Kanzari and Luca Marinelli's characters, Joe and Nikki. The pair's Muslim and Crusader mortal enemies turned eternal lovers really stole the show. Heist. I watched this one on Netflix and I don't think it was an exclusive, but this is one of those films that seem to have been released under the radar for one reason or another, one of which I'll get into. The film was suggested to me by the Netflix email algorithm and it was released back in 2015. One of the biggest draws to this film was a strangely remarkable cast. It includes Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Robert De Niro, also with David Bautista, MMA fighter turned actor Gina Carano, and uh, who can I forget, Mark Paul Gosselaar, Zach Morris of Saved by the Bell fame. You guys remember Saved by the Bell, right? I'm not the only one, I think. I'm just still glad he's doing work. In all honesty though, his character is one of the more interesting ones in the film. Uh, but let's let, get to the nitty gritty on why none of us have heard about this film until now. Especially, in all honesty, since it wasn't really completely off. The film is about a heist gone wrong. Jeffrey D. Morgan has a daughter dying of cancer and, and basically takes up a once in a lifetime offer from Bautista to rob their crime lord boss Robert De Niro and as film logic would dictate, things go horribly wrong. The calm and collected Morgan has to deal with Batista, the angry, can't take orders hothead. The getaway driver, who is a spineless crackhead, and De Niro's right hand man, played by Morris Chestnut, and Zach Morris's corrupt detective. All the ingredients for your typical popcorn action movie recipe. So, why have I never heard of this before? Well, for all the great performances, particularly by Morgan, De Niro, and Zach Morris, there are some mediocre ones by Bautista, Carano, and basically everybody else. In the end, when everything comes together, the film basically amounts to being incredibly generic and pretty forgettable. The film is so very middle of the road. Not anything I'd plan a date night over, but also not something I'd all out ignore if I saw it on TV one day. It's a very samey action crime film. Winchester. I'm a little worried this video is going to be all on the positive side. I'm gonna have to throw in a stinker here or there. Winchester, however, is not that in my opinion. Another film suggested to me by the robots toiling over at Netflix, Winchester is a horror film about the famous Winchester Mystery House, a TLDR for those of you who are into the occult and weird creepy haunted houses. The heir to the Winchester Rifle Company lost her daughter and in a fit of grief reached out to the supernatural for answers. A medium told her that she needed to build a big goofy house to appease all the ghosts of the victims of her company's legacy, the Winchester Repeating Rifle. The film is basically that. It stars Helen Mirren and Jason Clarke. Clark in the film plays a junkie doctor with his own ghosts to appease and he is summoned by the lawyers to the Winchester company to assess the mental health of Mirren's Sarah Winchester. When he gets to the house, he starts seeing ghosts. Strange things start to happen, etc. Ultimately, Clark has to come to terms with his own mental health struggles 
get it, ghosts, to finally help the Winchester heir dispose of one particularly evil spirit that was ensnared by the house. I actually really enjoyed this film. It's a pretty straight up poltergeist-like tale, but what is most interesting about it is the fabricated lore that was devised behind the based on actual events legend of the Winchester Mystery House. In the film, Mirren's character is basically trapping evil spirits in various rooms of this enormous mansion. When one becomes dangerously powerful, she seeks out Clark. You see, he has a connection with the spirit world because he actually died on the operating table after having been shot, of course, by a Winchester rifle. This one probably won't keep you up at night, but it's worth a shot. The Five Bloods. I actually watched this one a couple of weeks ago only I was too busy doing my video on Spike Lee's Do The Right Thing, which I'll link somewhere with YouTube magic. This was a Netflix original film by the iconic filmmaker Spike Lee. It's about four American veterans who return to Vietnam to find the remains of their lost squad captain. But that's not all though. They're also back to recover a chest full of gold that they stole from a crash transport plane while enlisted. As can be expected from many of Spike Lee's films, this film does a great job of demonstrating, in particular, the experience of the black soldiers in Vietnam. It also calls into question U.S. history with enlisted people of color, brave soldiers that fought and died in a myriad of U.S. engagements around the world, only to be considered lesser citizens when they returned home. The film is pretty socially relevant, and I love the discussions it engaged in. There are also some pretty great performances by Delroy Lindo and Chadwick Boseman. I love to see Chadwick Boseman. Anything he does. Everything he does. Now you'd think that the way I'm speaking about the film that I would have loved it, and well, I sort of did, but I sort of did. I love a lot of what the film broached in terms of discussion. I found it super cool that most of the gang were kind of locked in this modern age look and modern age of their, about them during flashback sequences. And the premise is interesting enough. I just felt that the film lacked a little bit of tonal consistency. At times the film was an old man squad film, like, you know, like Bonds of Friendship, like, you know, good old days. And at times it was a very, took a very serious look at PTSD and the generation lost the war. And then there was this whole bizarre heist sequence about it. All these aspects could blend into a film, no problem. And Spike Lee has done similar stuff to this with films in the past, like Inside Job, Inside Man, Inside Man. But for this film though, I feel like it just didn't homogenize very well. Fatal Affair, this Netflix original and in the case of this film, original is applied with the loosest amount of definition, is the story of a psychotically unstable man obsessed with a married woman whom he had a crush on while in college. With some added modernization to keep the story relevant, this is a narrative that has been done to absolute death. That, in and of itself, is not particularly a bad thing. This film, though, is a bad thing. As of writing this, I haven't even been able to stomach finishing this movie and as much as they've tried to modernize and keep the plot relevant with the inclusion of very real and scary facets of internet stalking and cybersecurity, everything else in the film is just so hacky. Omar Epps, who plays the obsessed stalker, has a crazy face that is so overplayed and caricatured, I couldn't take it seriously at all. And I think the serious failure that this film had with me is that it played itself out very much like a romance novel thriller. Very pulp and consumable media, more suited for casual escapism as opposed to any sort of critical or profound viewing. And that just bored the hell out of me. So those are the films in which I've put myself through for you in the last couple of weeks. If you have any kind of comments or any kind of interesting takes on any of the films I've seen and you want to make your comment known, please comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and to the video. Watch some of my other videos. And until next time, I'm Michael J. Migliori and I am your man on film. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And please keep an eye out on the channel and my blog for content coming up in the next few weeks. In the meantime, please take care of yourself.